shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to my initial review of Tamiya's brand new 140A scale F4B Phantom 2. Now, I was going to do a quick summary on the F4 and the current state of 140A scale Phantom kits, but that's the filler crap that I tend to scroll past anyway, so I decided to skip it. If you don't know what an F4 Phantom is, first of all, really? And second, there are plenty of places you can learn about it on the interwebs. As for the state of play, I'm sure I'll touch on it at times throughout this review, but do you really need an accounting of all the kits that Tamiya's newest completely and totally smokes? If there's some huge demand for such a thing, maybe I'll put something together later. But for now, there's some new Tamiya hotness to review. Before I hit the review proper, I want to take a moment to thank Danielle and Rudy at Lionheart Hobby down in Kyle, Texas, for getting this review copy into my hands. They're good people running a really great shop. And it's new and it's not that big yet, but it's mighty. It's got an excellently curated inventory of models, miniatures, games, puzzles, paints, tools, and so on. If you're in the area, definitely be sure to swing by. And if you're not, their web store should be going live any day now, so keep an eye out for that. Since the Phantom's literally hitting shelves right now, I'm sure there are a ton of inbox reviews being readied as I record this. And I've done inbox reviews in the past, and they're pretty much useless. So, instead of your typical clumsy sprue tour, this is going to be what I'll call a thorough test fit. I'll be cutting out, cleaning up, and taping together the entire airframe, and even gluing together the bits that I can get away with at this early stage. This way you'll get a sense of how the kit actually builds, and get to see some of that holy shit that's amazing engineering that Tamiya pulls off so well. And after this review, I'll be swinging back around and giving this kit the full episodic build series treatment, so be sure to look out for that but I wanted to get this review out fast while the kit is still fresh and new. So to an extent, this kit eschews the whole work begins in the cockpit trope and actually has you start out playing with fuselage bits. Essentially having you get the fuselage half sorted out with installing the refueling probe or just the door if you want, a little panel up here. I'm assuming J2 is a clear part considering that it wants you to paint it silver there, so we'll not even worry about that for the purposes of this review. Swap around here, and you've got, again, these little door bits that install onto the fuselage, and you've got the joining of the nose to the starboard fuselage here. And one thing I would note is that if you look at the fuselage itself and how the sprue gates are arranged, you have one here on the canopy release pull from the inside. It's a nice little tiny piece. Clipping that off isn't really going to impact anything along the cockpit sills or any of that kind of stuff. We have another one back here along the dorsal spine, but completely hidden from view. Got another one back here. Again, this there's going to be an end cap that goes on here, so completely hidden from view. Got these down here that'll be obscured by the arrestor hook. We got one down here on this thing. It's never going to be visible. And then the most visible sprue gate that you have is this one down here at the very bottom. So all along the cockpit sill, all along the tail area, anywhere that you could really have a visible nasty seam or a visible nasty sprue gate to clean up, it's not there. This is just one of those little touches that Tamiya does that is super appreciated. Okay, so most kits that have a refueling door like this they tend to want you to open it for some really annoying reason, because you don't exactly see fuel probes extended on the ground all the time. And they usually have you put a bay back in here, and if you want to put the door in, it's kind of up to you to make it fit. Well, to me, it gives you the option to either install the bay or to install the door. And again, one of the reasons I love Tamiya, take that N8 piece. Just look at that. Look at the sheer precision of that fit. Next up is bearing these two pieces together. Which I'm assuming in typical Tamiya fashion is completely <laughs> and totally pain-free. I mean, just look at that joint right there. Dear God, how do they do it? It's 
So next up, we have the exhaust caps that go right here. And on F4s, this portion and this portion are in bare metal. Now, I'm not aware of this changing from the B to other variants, so I'm assuming that this was done to preserve detail. But on the Zuki Mira kit, this whole bare metal piece here is a separate piece that has to be glued in, and the fit is really wonky. So it's nice to see it tied into the panel here, so you're not having to fight a seam line right there. And this... slots in like that. <clears throat> okay, next up, moving into the cockpit. Tamiya has you drill a hole here in the Rio station for the center panel footrest kind of thing to fit into, which tells me that they are preparing for additional versions, including USAF versions, where you don't make that hole because you are installing rudder pedals. Man, with a one millimeter hole, that is a absolute press fit of a job. Way to go, Tamiya. I'm not even gonna glue that, there's no point. So these are these big old honking pieces right here. And the detail on these is rather good. I mean, certainly better than Academy's soft-ass bullshit that passes for this sidewall. They could be a little better, but, I mean, for what Tamiya usually puts out, this is definitely up there. Same with, if you look at the consoles here, nice detail, a little bit bumpy, but maybe I'm used to working in 132nd scale. This is a thing where when Edward comes in and they want to do a whole bunch of brassing for this to make a whole bunch of money selling resin stuff that's not really needed on a Tamiya kit, if they just came out and made direct drop fit replacements of these consoles with, you know, their high level of resin detail and all that stuff they can pull off, they'd have a, a winning product here in my opinion. And instead, they will probably come out with like a full resin cockpit that will sacrifice a lot of the Tamiya fit and end up not being used. But this thing is literally made for drop fit panels. Now, I have no intention of gluing these in at this stage. But if I can just place them in here, and kind of let them be their own things, we might have something. See. I think the rear bulkhead might help out in this regard. Again, I'm going to skip all of the Ford cockpit detail. We'll tackle that in the actual build. Same thoughts apply, though, in terms of the quality and whatnot. Interesting that they aren't trying to provide any sort of decal overlays for the consoles here. So they've done that in other things. Alright, now let's move on to the nose gear bay. Woohoo! Look at that fit. God damn. These interlocking gear bay doors remind me a lot of the P38 and the way that Tamiya approached its gear bays, which was similarly refreshing. Because they managed to pack in a good amount of detail, but in such a way that it's very easy and pretty much foolproof to get these together and to get them together with very good landing gear alignment. There it is, that's the nose gear bay. And just like with the P38, they've got the gear strut kind of stumped right there so you can install all the stuff that's needed for alignment and later on just plug the rest of the nose strut right into that which we will probably do at the end of the build 
Okay, now we've got the cockpit. Okay, so the cockpit's looking pretty good. So let's set that aside. Move on to the engines. So here we've got the two interior portions of the engines. These are separate parts, so you can paint the afterburner flame holder thingamajig and the turbine separately and combine them, which is awesome to see. Very nice detail in here. I mean, the surface detail on the flame holder is just amazing. And then to keep things cool, Tamiya has provided two D sprues and two identical parts, D1, that form the top and bottom of the actual engine trunking. And they go together like so. The only problem is we have two of these things, and the instructions helpfully tell you to remove the bottom one. So let's get the big chunkin' sprue cutters here. Yoink! Yoink! And then these just go like so. And because I don't think there's any interference over here because we've got these big fat plugs, I can put tape on the sides to hold it together. And these guys go with this little tiny piece on the flame holder sticking down. They just fit in like that. And so there we have the engines. And even the customary seam on the side that you typically find in jet exhausts. I mean, it's very minor, and they put it right on one of those little ridge lines. So it's definitely minimized. Very cool to see. Now for an extra bit of coolness. Let's see how the fuselage goes together. So basically what we do is engine. The engines go back here and they plug into this thing. And then there are these little divots right here that correspond to these little pips on the engines themselves. And they literally just yoink into place. Is that so hard? Nope. Thank you, Tamiya. We just need to be not floppy for long enough to seat into place. Like so. Good lord. Okay, look at that. Okay, so I am going to sacrifice one piece of tape to the inside here. I'll probably have to remove that one at some point, but just for now, just to hold things in place. And that's the fuselage together. It's a bit jankier than it would be with glue, but it's definitely getting along. Okay, so here is the dorsal spine. And then Tamiya wants us to remove this forward little fin antenna. These infinity glass files, by the way. Amazing. Ta da.
Okay, moving on to the wings, it's time to drill a shitload of holes. Let's start with the 1.5 millimeters. These are for mounting the upper wing bulges. It's nice that they give us two at these offset angles. Assuming that will help things line up quite well. Now we have a shitload more holes in the lower wing. One thing I would note for caution on this lower wing is the sprue gates along the leading edge flaps here are very thick. And if you're not careful, you can do what I did and get a little bit of a stress wound on the lower detail area, <clears throat> which is not fun to fix. Okay, now that the wings have been all drilled out, it's time to move on to the wing spar, which is a really awesome, chonky piece of work. Got the underside view of the engines visible through this little hole here. Of course, there are going to be doors there, so it's going to be a very limited view, but still, that's quite a bit of detail. There are a few things to add in here that I think one of them I can add right away because it's the same color as the rest of the engine. To me, it calls out XF-16, so flat aluminum. But look at the fit of that thing. If these were more exposed, I might wait until later on this one, but eh. This is one of the things where you just get a glimpse. And the second piece is A-10, which is kind of like the rear spar running across the back of a little Dumajiggy. Next up, we've got the various pieces that form the gear bays. They're all P's. And what the hell, we can go and install those. It would help if I installed these on the right side. That might be why they weren't fitting. Okay, so make sure that you're installing from the top, not from the bottom. Duh. Okay. I'm sure this piece will fit much better from this angle. Oh yeah. And look, I don't even think we need to uh, really worry about gluing this. I think this will probably stay in place on its own. Oh yeah. And that's a that's like a click into place type of situation. So if you've spent any time with Academy's F4, you know that the gear bays, not only do you have to install the gear struts before you close the wings, the gear bays themselves are also this weird like three or four handed affair where you're trying to get the different walls to align at the same time that you're trying to get them in the right spacing so that everything works. And it's a huge pain in the ass. Well, I think maybe uh, Academy should go to school a little bit on how it's Mia does this because this is just gorgeous. There is no room for error unless you install them upside down like I started doing. Let's see how this fits. We've got these two holes up front. Boom. Wow, that was difficult. Holy shit. To me, uh, embarrassing the world yet again. Okay, but before I close these up, I want to go ahead and get the humps glued on to the wings, upper wings. mounting hole so you just get it nice and flush like that flip it over Put some of the old extra thin and there you go okay well I give these a minute to set we can go ahead and move back to the lower wing and to the rear exhaust cap thing which 
again has some of that wonderful Tamiya engineering. Now let's do some wing stuff. Man, there is just no getting the alignment wrong on this thing at all. Love to see it. Okay, so it's time to join the wings to the fuselage. And this works with these little pins up front right here that connect to these guys. And the pins in the back that go along here. And this little tab thing that plugs up into here. So, check this out. Ta-da! How is that? Man. <laughs> you just have to sit there and kind of cackle with glee at how good Tamiya is at this stuff. Now, we don't really have a good way to secure the front, but it doesn't really seem to need it. But we do have is this front piece R3 that just goes like that looks like I got a little bit of extra cleanup I need to do here on the side and that's pretty damn good maybe a little bit of a little bit of play there but for the purposes of a test fit when we're not committing glue to all this stuff I'll take it and there we have it. Full on wings on the Phantom. Again, this joint will be glued right in here, so that little popping thing isn't going to be an issue. Alright, what is next? Okay, moving on to the air intakes. So, this little ridged portion here that is usually a weak point of Phantoms because it's molded to this, or it's like some weird assembly bit. With this, Tamiya did a nice thing where it fits just like this, because the inside literally forms part of the intake, and it forms it on the inside wall where it's functionally invisible. Or the outside wall, I should say, where it's functionally invisible. So I'm going to glue this guy in place. If you really want to make a big deal of it, you can get in there and you can erase that line with some putty, etc., and have it looking all sharp. But it already looks pretty good as it is. And then these are the splitters. And they fit just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and glue these two because basically this forward portion and the the meshed portion here need to be light gold gray, and back here needs to be white. And so there's no real point to keeping them separate if I still have to mask this piece. Well, now it's time to join these. Do that first. Oh man, that fit is so bad. How will I ever live? I don't even know if I need to tape that. That's just... That's amazing. Well done to Mia. Now one thing I like about these intake parts is if you look right there, they keep the numbers on the outside so you can keep track of what is what and how alignment goes where. Alright, so these... Just fit up like this. Oh, that looks nice. Not even really much of a seam to clean up. Maybe up top right there. But, I mean, it's, you're going to have an obstructed view of that coming in from the outer, from these intakes. So, good lord. Again, Tamiya with the excellent placement of stuff. And we've got the turbine face. I'm not going to glue the little bullet thing on the front because eh, I'll do it later. And it's, again, like some of the cockpit stuff, not integral to a test fit. I know it'll fit on there. Let's see. So 
There's a view down the intake. And this one. Literally slides home like that. That's all there is to it. Okay. So to install the intakes, the way that this goes is the intakes basically slide back into here. And we've got these notches at three points around where they join up on the fuselage. We've also got this little tab up here at the nose, which fits that little which fits that little slot doohickey right there. So far, the only mistake I've noticed Tamiya make and the only place where you need to watch out is the sprue gate on the bottom of the outer intake piece because it's right here on the curve and if you don't get it just right you're going to probably have a bad time getting it to sit flush with the wings cool, that is a phantom Next we're on to the stabilizers, which have these little insert pieces on the bottom, which, just like all the other insert pieces, fit the way that a Tamiya kit fits. Again, I suspect these are more of the preserving detail variety than the any significant differences variety. Now we've got these pieces which form the back of the heat shield basically like so and right in here they trap some little polycap action this piece goes right on top the instructions say not to glue the polycaps so I think I can just place this install this, it'll just trap it. Yep, just like that. Should just drop into place. Right in here. Like so. So pretty much the way that this works is you have this piece of the heat shield and stabilizers come down and sit on it, like so. Then we get the fuselage. And it just plugs right in, just like that. So pretty much every corner of this kit has these amazing little touches of just engineering mastery that are not present in the Academy or the Zuki Mira or the Hasegawa kits. You know, for example, look at the arrestor hook here. Look at that big chunkin' spar piece that connects in there and plugs right in here and it just sits perfectly. I mean, Come on. That's awesome, because that means that you can get in here, you can do all the detail work you want to do on the heat shield. You can just leave this thing floating loose as long as you want. And then at the end, just come in and plop it in, and everything's hunky-dory. Another place where this is in evidence is the exhaust cans. And with these exhaust cans, Tamiya takes a different approach from the other players who put out Phantoms in the past couple years. And their approach has honestly been to give you shoddy versions that make you want to buy resin. Tamiya, basically come in here and you place these panels. Now these seem really janky at first, but they're basically 
following the same principle as like an arch in architecture, which we'll see in just a minute here. My big fear with these was that when I got them together, I would just kind of have to like show them and then leave them off because they would be too floppy and too difficult to tape and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not ready to glue these yet. However, there is no need to because even with just this, you know, shoddy basic level of cleanup, these things are rock solid. Just absolutely rock solid. Because they're using the arch principle where basically each of these pieces sit in here and press on the others and push each other against the outer wall, making them very, very sturdy. And, I mean, honestly, the detail in here is as good as you're going to get from aftermarket cans, especially on the inside. So, might suggest a little bit of extra cleanup here along the outside just to make sure that all these things look right and the gaps aren't super obvious. And then to install them, just kind of come in here and they see it right into place. Perfectly. And you get a nice shot up the ass right there. I mean, this is some next level work that Tamiya is doing here. So the next several steps in the instructions take us through mounting gear doors and things like that, which I'm not really eager to do just yet. You know, mounting the nose wheel will be fun, but I want to kind of wait till there's a bit more of an airframe. So let's go ahead to go to the nose. So to install this, you know, you can just go in here and try to anchor it from the back and drop it, but it doesn't really want to seat like that. However, if you kind of angle it in from the front first, get that under, you know, sort of under the level where it needs to be, then you push down on the back, boom, we have it. And then let's see how the nose cone fits onto the front of the F4. It's got these little grooves on the inside that align to right here on either side. Oh, I'll take that. I mean, for a, for a test fit with tape, yep, that's working for me. Pushing all my buttons. And we've got more underside shit, which I don't want to do yet. So since we're skipping all the underside stuff for the moment, we get to return to the wings, and we get to figure out what we want to do here. Now, as far as I know, the Tamiya kit is the first 148th kit that I'm familiar with that has the option of the folded wingtips. The Hasegawa ones had them molded in place. The Academy and Zukimura ones had them as separate pieces that you glued in, but you basically only had the option for extended, and that's it. So it's pretty damn cool to see this as a way to go. We also have flaperons up or down, speed brakes open or closed. So I definitely want to do the wings folded this time, and this is where things get really interesting and really cool. Because instead of having a thing where you glue it and then you attach it, and you hope you get the angle right, Tamiya provides these pieces, so B11 and 12 for extended, B13 and 14 for folded, that already have the angle in them for you. And all you do is basically attach them to the wingtip and to the wing itself. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's see how the wingtips go together. So here we've got part D23, the wingtip itself. And all we're going to do is we're going to take B14 here and clunk it right there. And we also need to add B18. It's little place and look at that it just slots right in so I still need to put some tape up front because I'm not about to glue these things yet we're a ways off from that so there's one and this could do with a little bit more cleanup like I can see in here on I think on B18 there was like a little bit left but also as we glue the to me extra thin or whatever you're using for glue Okay, well, I hope it recorded that, because I looked up at the monitor and everything was fuzzy. But, basically, everything here is pretty hunky-dory. I think I have a little bit of cleanup I could do on here on B18. 
but that'll be another thing that like you know once we start gluing this with extra thin those sprue gates won't be as much of an issue but still yeah i do need to get in there and pick that off but that's pretty cool another cool thing is in addition to having the folded wingtips because the wingtips themselves are sprue d sprue d is a double sprue so it has things like the wingtip drop tanks etc and because of that we have a whole second set of wingtips that we can build extended so theoretically you know if you were to magnetize these or something like that you could pretty much hot swap them into and out of the f4 as you saw fit so i'm not going to install the extended ones it's not really where i want to take my build but come on think about all the fighting about the Zukimura kit or the Academy kit to get these things installed at the right angle. And the solution the whole time was to build the angle into a separate piece. Fucking Tamiya, man. And so basically, all you do is you take this piece and you just repeat what we did on the wingtips, put it right there, glue it, you're good to go. Bob is your uncle, as they would say. Same thing with the folded wingtips. They slot in right there, and that's it. That's all you got to do. No weird fitting of an awkward join or any of that stuff. It's all just right there. Fit this here. So I also need to make sure. Get this back piece fitted in as well. And boom, we have folded wingtips on a 148 Phantom. That's so fucking cool. Man, I love it. Okay, moving on to the flap runs. I already know that I want to build these down. So I'm using the down inserts that basically just fit in here super terribly like so. And one thing you'll note, if you look at the tabs, this one says R, the other one says L, so that way when these things are floating around separate as you're painting them, you can keep track of which one is which. Just like so. Fantastic. All right. Anyway, that is the wing surfaces wrapped up with the wingtips folded and the flaperons down. Looking pretty damn cool. Now the next few pages are all various ordnance and underside stuff, and again, I'm just going to skip the underside stuff. It's not really super relevant to how everything goes together, and it's just going to be more of a pain in the ass to hold it while it's on upside down and shit like that. So, let's get on to the vertical stabilizer. Okay, so first things first is I need to go ahead and cut off this part of Q3, which tells me that this is for another variant that we're not seeing yet. So maybe a J, maybe a CD, we shall see. But each one of these tails has that little forward bit molded with both sides to the half. So you're gonna have to cut off one of them no matter what you do anyway. So, goodbye. Nice knowing you. And now, we get to glue front portions onto, it seems like one that makes sense to tackle these inner bits first. Get some grip going here, where it actually mounts. Okay, so I went ahead and shifted the tape back here and installed B6 on the back and then just wrapped a little bit of 2mm around there. We've got this piece, which has a little doohickey sticking off. Technical term. Drops right in. Tail. Drops right in on top. Man, you could literally leave that off until the very end of the build, which is going to be awesome we're dealing with the decals and the heat shielding stuff around here. Good call to Mia. Okay, and we've also got the 
what I'm just going to call the tippy top of the tail that needs to be dropped in place. Just like that. There is an F4 tail. Now, from what I understand, this piece is apparently a sin against all F4Bs because it doesn't allow you to do certain variants or something like that. Fuck if I know. It's the top of the tail. If I decide to build a variant that looks a little different, I will somehow, I think, live with myself. Okay, before I move on to the cockpit, I want to go ahead and deal with the gear struts. So I've already installed the nose strut here, and basically I just put the nose wheels on and just wrapped some tape around just to hold them in place. But they actually fit very surprisingly securely. The nose the nose strut, if you're familiar at all with the P38 Lightning, operates in the same fashion. So basically it's got this little mount down here in a big old square peg, and it just sits right on top like that. It's pretty awesome. So for the main gears, I'm not going to go ahead and install every little bit of it, just the, the big chunkier components. So the gear door, strut, and the wheel. Now, if you look at the main strut, it's got a curious sort of conical axle for the wheels. And there's also this little hole right here, which is really useful because there's a corresponding little pip on the wheel. And so if we bring it in and do that, everything lines up and we're good to go. And then on the flip side, or on the back side of this, this just, do, 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 come on. Get the holes aligned. There we go. It just does that happy business. I'm just gonna wrap this around. Just to hold it all in place while I drop it and throw it. I mean it's pretty damn sturdy as it is. And now we can go ahead and drop these into their little mounting posts. like that. Just like that. See, those things are very securely in. And we've got a Phantom on its feet. Awesome. That's looking pretty good. No nose weight of any kind needed. It's not a tail sitter. So now let's go ahead and focus on the cockpit and the nose and the canopy and all that and finishing up this quick test fit. So to me, I absolutely went to school on Academy and Zukimura and their F4 Phantoms and looked at the areas where those kits didn't quite work and found clever ways around them. And one place where they certainly went to school on Zukimura was the cockpit. The Zukimura cockpit basically built up the whole thing and then you put the cockpit sill in there and then you close the halves around it. And it's kind of frustrating. If you don't get it exactly right, you're going to have less than fun. With the Tamiya, hey, look at that. Everything fits. Now, I'm only going to test fit the fully closed canopy. I am assuming the open canopy will work perfectly fine. No big deal. The challenge with it, though, is to get to this point where you're choosing open or closed, you have to make certain choices up front. So, namely, these C30 through C33 pieces have to be glued into either the closed canopy or the open canopy, and then you're dealing with the midsection and the various pieces, and there's basically just a lot of fussy things to deal with, and that doesn't really lend itself all that well to a test fit. So I'm personally not sure which of these I'm going to go with yet, but we can figure it out along the way. For the test fit, though, I think it's enough just to drop pieces in as needed. Now it is nice that Tamiya ships these things very well protected. The main canopy piece does have that characteristic little mold seam in the middle that you're going to need to sand and buff out. We're not going to do that for a test fit either. Okay, let's see how these pieces fit. So H1 does the thing that Tamiya and a lot of others have been doing lately where Instead of just being the windscreen and having to deal with like an awkward filling situation right here, it's just the entire front up to the nose. 
and it fits wonderfully. And then the back piece, the main canopy, also fits down wonderfully. Okay, so with the canopy installed, I think I've taken the Tamiya F4B about as far as I'm willing to take any jet in an initial review test fit type of situation. And I have to say, I think I took it a lot further than I would have been able to take any of the other Phantom contenders. I mean, all the way down to the landing gear and the wheels attached. Like, good God. I couldn't imagine doing that with the Zukimura or with the Academy. Well, the Academy forces you to glue the struts in, but the wheels, the nose strut, I don't think so. Overall, I mean, as you've seen throughout this review, the kit itself is a marvel of engineering. I mean, to me, I've walked into this with straight up engineering swagger. You know, the way that the intakes go together, the windscreen and the integrated clear piece, the nose, the way it just slots on, the main spar that helps locate the landing gear exactly and locate the wings exactly. The internal structure built off of the nose gear bay and, you know, the cockpit mounts too that locks everything in here in place. The way that the engines have their little posts coming out of them to, again, set the exact width of the fuselage right here. The tail, the fact that, you know, I can just pull this on and off at whim and it fits perfectly with no real seams. It's, it's all fantastic. I mean, hell, the even the arrestor hook and the way it can just slot in and out or the wonderful use of essentially you know arch archways and architecture and the way that the pressure of the individual plates for the exhaust all fit together to squeeze each other just the right pressure to hold themselves in place the wing tips again are you know another place where i am super super pleased with this the idea of even just being able to build a phantom with the wings folded up like this I mean, even that in and of itself is cool, but the fact that there's that plus the ability, if you want to, to also just hot swap in the extended tips and just the genius way that they found to solve for that so you're not having to worry about any specific angle or any of that kind of stuff the way that you do with the Zuki Mura kit or the Academy kit. Man, Tamiya just knocked it out of the park with this. And in my opinion, this is easily the best aircraft kit ever tooled and ever manufactured. I mean, it's better than their P-38, it's better than their F-14, and, you know, yeah, there may be a few out there who want to laugh at that idea, but I would say, find me a better kit. Find me one that does the job of being a kit and going together better than this thing. I mean, holy shit, it's amazing. If you have any interest in Phantoms, any interest in Jets at all, and even if you don't, I would recommend getting this kit just to experience the way that it builds. It's that good. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this initial review and set this sucker back in the box so I can finish my P-38 and I will be starting this in the very near future. Before I drop off, I also want to thank Danielle and Rudy at Lionheart Hobby for hooking me up with this kit to review, uh, for texting me literally the moment that the FedEx truck pulled up to the shop to drop these things off. It's cool getting one in my hands literally the day that it starts to be publicly available. And I'm looking extremely forward to actually tackling this as a full build instead of just a quick review. You know, it's cool to see exactly how good it is, and now I'm chomping at the bit to actually dive into it for real. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope this review proved useful, and keep an eye out for a full episodic build series on the F4B Phantom coming in the very near future. Thanks, and catch you later.